Hey guys, how's it going? Rona Man here, and uh, we're on top of the building, and we got a, a little little guest visitor here. Uh, What's up, guys? MGTOW? What's up? It's Chris Cantu. Chris Cantu. Live on the Ronin Man channel. Yeah. And, uh, we're, we're doing some cross collabos, yeah. and uh, we're going to be doing a lot more videos together. So oh, uh, yeah. we're admiring the view here. I'm less than 24 yeah. hours into Bangkok, and uh, just already learning more about myself and about the world from this trip. You know, already a day in, so. Thanks for having me on, Ronan Man. And Hell yeah! A, a third guy here. Yeah. Hey, the, I'm Christian from Copenhagen. We got the we got the uh, the first attendee, the first arrival. It was a couple days, how many days ago? Three days ago? Uh, yeah, like three or four days ago. Yeah. yeah it's awesome to be in Bangkok. Just came from Koh Samui and having a great time here. It's just amazing. Koh Samui is an island, guys. It's yeah. a tropical island. It's yeah, really beautiful, nice. Beautiful beaches. Cheap. Uh, yeah. It's nice to just check cruise around and uh, the scooter. And check out the beaches and the nightlife and everything. It's amazing here. Thailand. It's a little different than this view here, you know. Yeah. But this is good too. You can see there's like swimming pools on top of all the buildings. There's like fucking swimming pools everywhere here, man. Everywhere. So we got these guys right here putting the, that building together. Just oh yeah. Hanging off the scaffolding. Well, that's that's the building that we fil I filmed in the very. Remember that? Did you see the one in the beginning? They were just starting to make it. I think so. And then we talked You're about the construction workers. Yeah, 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 down there. That's the building, and now wow. you can see like how huge it is. Because we're way the hell up here now, man. We're way up here. This is like a typical Asian metropole. So I think there are like uh, around 10 million people living here in Bangkok. It's just full of Spanish. 10, 10 million, right? Yeah, 10 million. Yeah. It's a huge city. There's, there's a lot of interesting buildings, too, if you look out here. Today is a little bit kind of cloudy, so you can't really see as well, but there's some kick-ass buildings out there. You know, it's, like, it's not like boring. Like, you look at architecture sometimes, the cities are really boring. Like California, like a lot of times the fucking, you know, you're, you're out in the, like, the suburbs, you know. Like, it's just all looks the same. Strip malls. Right. Like, right, 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 right. Here, here you look at the buildings, they're all unique. You know? yeah. Really impressive, like modern architecture. Yeah, they're, they're like trying all kinds of impressive. It's very good. I don't know if you can see right there, way back there. See that one there? They're straight in the middle, right back there with the weird glass on top. It's all like uneven and stuff. Yeah, yeah that one's cool. Yeah, it looks like a Jenga game. Someone's playing Jenga or something. <laughs> Pulling the blocks out. It's different floors, right? <laughs> all right, well Chris is going to lead this discussion. So what's the topic here? Yeah, guys, so, uh, you know, a lot of you have been following my journey and excited to, to see me come overseas. And Ronin Man has been here overseas in, in various uh, countries for the last 30 years. And so, uh, and Christian has visited uh, I think three or four times. Oh yeah, uh, here in, in Bangkok. So we have, you know, the fresh off the boat with me. Christian's been here, you know, a couple more times, and then Ronan just, you know, the last three decades. And so what we wanted to talk about today was just talk on some topics, some things that maybe you are, that we're programmed to to, to do and to be uh, in the United States or in a lot of these first world countries, and then you get to some place like Bangkok where things are totally different but they're the same and, and, and what we mean by that is some things you know getting a getting a meal at a restaurant it may be the same but the prices may be different the, how you're treated uh, how people treat each other so just going in on a little bit of the differences that i'm seeing here uh, you know one day in and and uh, kind of breaking free another stage of deprogramming deprogramming myself from things that were taught that we needed you know you, you have to have a nine to five you have to get married you have to have two and a half kids uh, you know these things that we're kind of unraveling that aren't necessarily must-haves to have a free and, and enjoyable life so what's um, what have you noticed like the first couple of days just like time here um, I think just so uh, people uh, people in the United States whenever you walk into a restaurant whenever you're going shopping at the mall uh, they look at you and they they are very judgmental, I think. And and here, people, I just we, we just got through eating at a great food court. Food court was packed, and there was families, there was uh, you know, there there was kids running around, there was moms and dads, you know, with their kids for lunch. Um, I didn't get a sense of like this this thick judge. It was like they're just there having a good time, enjoying life, enjoying people. And so that was one of my observations just now when we're eating is that um, people seem to be more uh, in the moment and, and focus on spending time with the people that they love versus making it an event, a 
or, or making it some kind of superficial nonsense uh, like a lot of a lot of families in the United States. Basically just not taking it too seriously, just using it as a public meeting place, right? Yeah. Just being normal, like just like in normal. the living room or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I think that's the thing in, in, in Asia is really weird is that because the, the private spaces are very small, like the houses aren't as big, so people go to public spaces to do stuff. Yeah. So like you see people like, and, and, and the other thing is like you ignore stuff. So if, you, if I'm walking through a park and I see like a couple having sex in the park, mm -hmm. I, I pretend like I can't see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll glance over, but I, I won't like sit there because, yeah, they're, yeah, because they're doing their thing and it's yeah. like, okay, whatever, you know. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, they, they whatever reason, maybe they're trying to catch, they don't want to catch, they want to catch the last train or, you know what I mean? It's like you kind of learn to ignore things because everybody's kind of private and public right you know so right. yeah yeah i know what you're saying like i saw just now uh like a kid a, a, a mom and a dad with a little boy and the little boy was so excited they must have or he was just excited that his dad showed up for this lunch and, and just the little moment that they shared in the food court was really awesome it, it's like you don't see moments like that a lot in the united states uh, you see these fragmented families these fragmented relationships you know, mostly what you see in the United States is the kids are staring at their tablet or staring at their smartphone, playing a game, mom's off playing a game, whatever. Dad's probably not even in the picture. And, and, and so it's a lot of fragment, fragments. Uh, whereas here, what I've noticed is like a lot of families, a lot of like, uh, people kind of know their place and, and make the best of it, I think. And I think that could go a long way for just having a higher quality of life is just, is just accepting being in the moment and, and not living for some superficial kind of nonsense. Right, you right. Keep it up with the Jones. List. So basically, family is more traditional. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a neat thing to see, you know. Yeah. It's just like it's just it's good to see healthy kids. Like I like kids, you know. Yeah. And you see them like running around. They're not super fat, you know. They're healthy. Right. They're just kind of having fun, climbing trees, fucking jumping in the water. Yeah. Like that's the way I grew up. Yeah. I, I love to see that, you know? Yeah. It's like really sad for me to see like kids that are looking unhealthy, they don't have any sun. Right. You know what I mean? They're all like they're fucking just pasty, they're, they're happy. Yeah, they're just, like staring at some fucking thing with the squinted eyes and right. maybe maybe studying for some test that they're gonna forget everything right afterwards, you know? It's like Right. What the fuck is that, you know? Right. It looks yeah. like people here actually appreciate what they have more, even I, though they have a lot less. Oh uh, yeah, and also like they, they, they don't really have as much of like a social wel welfare state, right? So in the families they take much more care, care of each other, right? Uh, and much, much more like a unit. Right. In the West we're much more atomized, so everybody's like taken care of by the state in a way. Mm -hmm. That's like the illusion at least, right? Yeah. So we don't feel that we're so kind of pressured to to um, to to take care of each other. Like so we become very kind of atomized. Here's way more traditional, like Often, like families live like three generations together. Mm -hmm. They take care of each other, even like at work. They're like a little kind of family there, and they're just like the super like more togetherness, and that makes them just more happy in general than having more money. So that's right. the funny thing, right? When you have more like community or more, you know, you're more kind of closer together, helping each other. That's more, much more important in the end than having you know more money or whatever. It's, it's a superficial kind of thing. You know, it's interesting you say that because I think. I think in general, hey, tell me what you guys think. I, I think that it seems like to me, like MGTOWs in general are guys who would rather have a perfect world. Like it's partly why they're disappointed because they'd rather have like a cool, like normal situation, you know, and they see that it's not like that. Mm -hmm. And that really bums them out. Yeah. Whereas some guys just kind of ignore it and they just like take drugs or whatever. They just ignore, they don't think about how they feel. But whereas MGTOWs are more like, Fuck, this is not good, you know? This is not right. healthy. Like, I don't like to see people fighting all the time. I don't want to live like that, you know? It's like, I don't want that, you know? But they're, they're just basically kind of accepting what's already happening. And and, and, and they're more sensitive. I, I think in general, I think MGTOWs would rather have the world where, you know, like, they have a choice. Like, not obviously, not everybody wants the same thing, right? But just where some people are doing this, some people are having the kids, some people are having the family, running around, they're farming, they're doing stuff together, you know? like. Just normal, good life, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Which is which is why everybody's like, "Fuck this shit!" Like, I I don't want that, you know. Right. Look at my neighbors; they're fighting all the goddamn time. Right. You know, she just took all his money, just committed suicide. Like, fuck that! What the fuck is going on in this world? You know? Yeah, I mean, you make a great point 
uh, Ronan, about MGTOW, like I always say in my videos, uh, uh, MGTOW are the biggest lovers out there. You know, we get a bad rap because we call out the, the things we see of women, especially in the first world. Uh, but we, it's because we love them that we're talking about them. It's because we love humanity in general that we're calling out these things that we see. Like, like for me, coming here and just being here a day, like I can already tell that, that some aspects that, that they've gotten it right here, that they still have their humanity, they still have a sense of family and bonding, uh, whereas a lot, of, a lot of places in the U.S. have lost that aspect. So. So as MGTOW, as we're trying to find these answers, we're trying to uh, verbally talk out what these problems are that we're seeing in the world. Uh, you know, it's interesting, you can jump on a plane 15 hours, come to a place where you know, the women still look feminine, the, uh, the families still look and, and spend time with each other and enjoy each other's company. They're not, the kids aren't staring at a device. You know, there's, so there's, I guess, aspects, I always have of the belief that we don't have to settle for the life that we're, that we're given. We don't have to settle for the culture or the society that we're given, that, that there is a better way. And you come to a place like this, it's more simple, I would think, but it, it's, it's richer. It's a more rich experience than having a bunch of shit to do, but then everyone's fake and, and none, none of it means anything. It's all plastic. Oh, oh totally like uh, I, I had exactly like the same kind of uh, viewpoint or experience like you, you could like a lot of us MGTOW is actually quite successful we can have a bunch of girls like dozens or hundreds of, of women if that's what we want or we can have the op op opportunities to settle down with a woman we could have a good job and anything everything but um but still I mean we might be from from like a country where this kind of a cold kind of dull climate and the culture like like we were mentioning before is kind of very atomized and not really kind of uh, giving you the good vibes and everything and in the end you're like why why should I settle for this why not move to a place where where there's something else something something more something greater where I feel like a king where I feel like there's more like community where there's like a better vibe where I feel um, yeah it's just a better lifestyle right so in the end it's not about being in the first world or in the third world or whatever it's about like finding the place where you feel comfortable where where you have the things that, that are important to you right right that's interesting because a lot of people when they think about uh, Thailand or something all they think about is either transsexuals or cheap prices you know they don't think like this place is like super cheap we could rent this place by the way this this, is, this apartment is, is rentable this is totally kick-ass man on top of the building dude totally right it's got like two stories to the stairs there you can go up to the second floor oh there's people here no way paper street no way cool let's go over there Let's go in there. Yeah, this is this. I, I'm thinking maybe if anybody wants to rent this place, they can maybe rent this place, you know, right. and see what we can get, you know. Yeah. It's like kick ass. The view is insane, right? The view is <laughs> yeah. crazy, man. Crazy. Let's go to the other side here. The tie, basically, ties don't like the top floor of a building. Oh, wow. That's weird. Yeah. They're like super superstitious or something. Yeah, yeah, they're superstitious about buildings. They don't like the top floors. So you get these like killer top floors, super cheap. Which everybody wants a top floor in the West though. Yeah, right? totally. The Thais don't wow. want the top floor. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So you got these like killer views, you got big balconies, and then the Thais don't want it. Oh, like if you look at these top buildings, look at the top of the buildings, look, there's always closed curtains and like nobody there. Nothing there. That's what they do. They always, it's always like that. It's crazy. Especially the older buildings. Yeah. Like this building is an older building. Like this, this guy here, I've never seen them ever on the balcony. Ever. Not once. Oh. I don't even know if anybody really lives there, to be honest. Right. It might just be for the staff, the cleaning guys. Yeah, you know, I think, I think uh, from my perspective is that, you know, I wouldn't say that it's, 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 you know, er, that, 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 I guess you could say Thailand is, is still developing, right? So right. it's not quite a developed country yet. Right. And in some ways, the old way was better, you know? Right. You know, it's not like Thailand was better. It's like the U.S. was also, you know, simpler before. Right? It used right. to be better, like, you know? back in the day. That's what everybody thinks, seems to think, huh? I think, I think, I mean, like, 
what's better than like a simple life like eating good food right. like chopping down a tree fucking yeah. boning a chick having a good night's sleep you know uh, it seems like we we, we we traded like so much stress swimming in, in clean daily. water yeah like we have so much stress today like most people right there's so much you have to do like even like the social media you have to be on all the time like your job is like calling on you all the time like every everything like you're all the time like doing something right you don't really have time to kind of space out too much and that's like what we traded for like kind of like a higher standard of living and, and that's but, what they're starting to do here all yeah. these other countries they're, they're oh, trading yeah. they're making the same trades yeah mm -hmm. they're doing the exact same thing we did right. exact same thing right. it's just that it's, it's not yet you know it's just right. it's still like Gradually yeah we're in we're in the middle of this phase and they don't know where they're going to end up but we know right we know exactly where we're trying to escape up. where it ends up the end game <laughs> to come back here before it turns all the way right yeah. right 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 yeah. right and like as a, as a MGTOW as a Westerner coming out here I mean you could totally live on like let's say uh, 500 or, or a thousand baht per day right which is nothing compared to the West so you just have you don't have the same uh, need to all the time think about earning money because you can have a much lower cost of living and still like have a really cool life here like have a almost like a daily massage you can go to the pool to the gym whatever you can kind of have your own schedule and yeah you don't have to be so so worried about things it just makes you way more confident and way more relaxed and, and so much healthier so i think like also you can just be way more healthy out here like the food is amazing and you just don't have the same stress yeah i think you know i think i think lower prices of living is more important than just uh work i think that it's easier to be an honest man you know because you just don't have big prices so it's like why would you sell yourself right you know like why would you why sell, sell your, your values right just to get some expensive stuff right you got your like you started making money on the channel when you really had to right, right. you're like god dang it i have to right and that's right. when you did it right? right i think it's the same with stealing or whatever you're like you're pushed against the wall you know like and it gets really bad life is so bad and you got to do it you know right. if you're in a place where it's cheap you don't even think about selling your soul right like why would you do that like, right. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. like you just make a couple bucks and eat right it's like right. you know right. there would be no point in like you know selling your soul for a few bucks right it's like yeah that's like very yeah. much like like we were talking about uh just before like in some countries it used to be that you could uh you could leave your stuff in a place right and not be worried about it or you could like you, you wouldn't lock your door because like everybody had like a good standard of living so nobody was like out to get your things right. so so every like everybody was like good to everybody because everybody were kind of well off and not worried right you know you know i would say to this like some people would say like what we're saying is uh, trad trad con traditional like these guys are trying to go back uh, to, to the future to the past and i i really don't think so um but it's complicated right what, what i would say is like it's good to travel the world and it's good to see different phases of humanity because you learn about yourself too like right. you kind of see where your society came from right. and then and then it, and then it gives you options and it's never bad to have options you know because like you think well if you're ever in a phase where you're not sure what you want to do with your life and you think man i want to write a novel right and then you're like fuck i'm gonna go to thailand for a couple of years i'm gonna write a novel like you know because you could never do that in la like no it's just so much stress to save all that money to write a book you wouldn't even be able to write a good book right right you know whereas you come here and you got like twenty thousand dollars for like two years or whatever and then you're like okay right. you know i sold my fucking piece of shit rabbit or something right. now i'm gonna sit down and write the book you know right and then you have a couple years to have fun and travel around and ride elephants or whatever and then right. and then you're like fuck okay now I got the, I got this book started. I may as well finish it. I got six months left, right? You finish it up, right? It's, right. it's much easier because you don't have the stress. So, I think lower cost of living is, it's one of these insidious things that you can't really imagine until you're in it. Right. And you realize, oh man, this is good. Like all because I think there's a lot of things you want to do, but you just don't think they're realistic, so you don't even think about them. Like right. maybe you want to fly to the moon, right? But you can't fly because your arms can't take you, so you don't even think about it, right? But if you could fly to the moon, then you would think, well, fuck, I think I'm going to go to the moon, right? You know, like, yeah. and so a lot of things are like that. You start realizing, oh, shit, you know, I can actually uh, write a novel or I could actually start a YouTube channel or I could actually have something online, you know, and, and start getting it going. Because right. back home, I mean, how would you fucking make enough money being honest? Like you go being, live in your car for a year like I did. Right. And that's like the only way that it would give you a chance to do that. So I, I think when you were talking, I kind of thought of another example of... You know, when in the United States, in these first world countries, they always sell you on the new car, 
They sell you on the 2017 with all the bells and whistles, with everything just maxed out. Whereas if you came to a place like Bangkok, that's like buying an old beater Honda Accord that you know is going to start every time, that's really going to have very low issues. Uh, but it gets you from point A, they both get you from point A to point B. But one is selling you into debt and selling you into all these features that you don't really need. Whereas, you know, I have my 96 Jeep Cherokee, it, it ran like great. And, yeah. and it took me from point A to point B and it wasn't fancy, but it just worked. And so I guess maybe, it, maybe a metaphor for uh, what we're talking about here is that there's so many add-on options that they try to sell you with the new car that if you took a chance and maybe you just went and, and took a chance and didn't care about what you look like and you didn't care about driving the latest and greatest because you're trying to you know pick up chicks or whatever but if you just wanted to live and get from point a to point b and get in a cheaper car that would be much better on gas much better for your budget and everything. right right and you know what is interesting is what you're saying there i want to go back because my backpack's over there but you know what's interesting is um like you know when you you know when you um, like in my hometown, right? If I in my hometown, I care what people think about me a little bit, right? But when I'm traveling, you know, with people I don't know, like I don't care. I could care less what anybody thinks when I go to a new place. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I I in general don't give a fuck anyway. But I'm just saying that even less if I'm in a place where I don't know anybody. Like if you go to a new city, you just You're don't. More free. Yeah, free. you just don't care. You're like, whatever, you know, like, I'm never going to see these people again. I don't know these people. I, you know, there's millions of people here that I've never seen before. I'll never see again. So when you travel to another city too, like you're saying about the used car and the cheaper car, right? The more convenient, right? right? Maybe if you pull up at your local club where everybody knows you, right. you, you might be a little bit more sensitive about it, right? right? Whereas when you're in a new town, you're like, whatever, man. No one's going to see yeah. you. <laughs> you're like, I'm the man. Yeah. I'm the man. I'm going to fucking make oh, it happen yeah. tonight you know you don't care at all right oh, yeah. so i think that's good too right that's that that, that makes it easier when you travel because there's nobody that from your society judging you right, right. And, and, and they judge you by weird things anyway overseas too. you can't even kind of know what they're going to judge you on anyway so it's like right. whatever they think about me is like okay fine right. they might think i'm great right they might think i'm a total idiot like whatever you know it's like yeah it's easier Extreme. it's easier when you're traveling yeah yeah and, and like uh, back home, like in the West, like a lot of people are like uh, living like paycheck to paycheck, right? So they never really have the time or the economic kind of uh, uh, space to kind of pursue like what they really want to do in life, right? So when, when you're kind of pursuing this lifestyle, like living like abroad, like where it's cheaper and everything, you kind of buy time to kind of pursue those things that maybe you need to spend like two or three or six months yeah. to set up a business or, or these kind of things that is what, what you really want to do. And suddenly you're like making big money. So it's like a really good investment to really kind of get going, like set up your life the way you want it to kind of uh, get you to that point where you have the freedom and you kind of have the lifestyle that you want to have long term. And then you can start like thinking, oh, maybe actually I do want maybe to to have some kind of family or, or settle down or something, right? right? So you're not just stressed as much. It's suddenly like new opportunities open up, both like business-wise, but also like in your personal life. Right, and I, I wanna say one thing that's really important is like, it's easy to misunderstand this lower price thing because, okay, you might think, okay, I can move to Montana and I can live in a trailer in the middle of nowhere for nothing, right? right. But you're not gonna meet any people there and there's no energy and you're not going to have new ideas being thrown at you and you're not going to meet people and no one was going to want to come visit you right. like like you came to visit right you came here maybe to live right right and then christian is visiting and there's like and miggy's here he's going to be on the next video for sure yeah. and there's 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 a bunch of guys coming here uh we're kind of like meeting people and they're taking off going out and seeing things and we're going out and seeing things and we're coming back so we're just kind of right now we're just kind of cruising around but the thing is in in a city with a lot of life it's not it's it's look around here man i mean is this what you think of as low cost is this what you think of as like basic living i mean you know is this like bad living like having a pool or living on top of a fucking 40 floor building i mean is that right. is that like is that like barely getting by is that like grinding oh. it out you know right. like there's like tons of hot chicks walking down there you know all the time right endlessly 24 hours a day you know there's, there's great food the weather's, um, we're all wearing shorts and fucking t-shirts, oh, yeah, right. tank tops, sandals, and this is every day of the every year. Every day. 
So yeah. like there's the, I don't, I think that you gotta be a little bit careful. Like don't just think like low cost. You wanna be in a place with art, music, people, action, food, you know, like things just to kind of get your brain going. Cause I don't think you can be very creative if you're alone. I mean, I guess some people could. I mean, maybe yeah. some people that are very talented, they can go in a cave and they can write like of the Bible or something, right? right? But most people need kind of little more. Little oh yeah, I, I just came from like Koh Samui for, for, for a week, right? And that's yeah. like, it's really nice and all the beaches and the small little uh, towns and little night, nightlife and everything. But in the end, it's not like a place where I could even imagine spending like six months or a year, no. Right, that's what a lot of people do. That's a big mistake. Yeah. Is they go to these places where they want a vacation mm -hmm. to live. Right. And it's just like, it's like kind of like marrying a prostitute or something. Right? <laughs> just like really, that, yeah, it's, sorry. It's, it's better, short term is better. Right. But yeah. like long term is probably not such a great idea. It's not made for long term. Even like a week was enough. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm ready, ready to get out of there. Because yeah, it gets, it gets like the same, same old every day. Because there's right. not like the same kind of variety like in a big town like here. Here there's just everything, everything you can imagine is possible. The, the only thing I could see myself living on a beach is if there was killer surf because I surf and like I wake up in the morning and I and I'm out there just grinding it out, exercising like a madman. Three hours of my arms are like fucking noodles. Then I eat and I fall asleep and then I get some work done and then I want to surf in the afternoon. And that gives me the energy. So sometimes it's not the city itself. Sometimes there's other things like if you're really into some sport or something that that really pushes your limits, right? But generally, I think big cities tend to be better uh, for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, I've always been one to travel around and, and try to find where I wanted to build a foundation and going to the Bay Area, going back home to Texas, and then feeling like I found that in Denver, in the mountains, you know, very uh, uh, rural area, not, yeah. not a lot of people around. So it was good healing, and I think I needed that time this year to kind of get focused and get on my grind, but towards the end, the last couple of weeks, it was like, it was really, I was really isolated even though you know there's i was living in, in a town around here so i think maybe to your point uh is that you, you got to find the place that works for you for where you are at in life and for where i was at in life i had to go to denver and and, and go live the home free lifestyle whatever so i could build what i wanted to build so that i could move to the next stage in my life which was traveling overseas you know living right. cheaply you know living uh, making money online kind of thing yeah and so yeah. Um, so that's what a lot of guys want to do a lot of guys want to make money online yeah. digital on this nomad channel. digital nomad yeah, that's yeah, a lifestyle. yeah, yeah. there's so many ways you can do it right you can try to settle down in a place or you can like travel like one month Chris, here one month we're, there we're all digital nomads yeah, pretty yeah. much all three of us are digital and nomads that's like, you know? that's like the dream and Mig Miggy's a digital nomad yeah, yeah, yeah well, all four of us and, yeah. and then and then the other guy we met earlier Adam is a digital nomad yeah you know so we're and then the, the other guy who's here I'll just call him E you guys didn't meet him yet but yeah. this morning I met him yeah. I mean the guy just sold his company he's digital nomad right yeah. you know it's like that's really to me that's the shit yeah because because then you know like you're building a business and you're doing something you're learning but then you're not tied to anything right you know right and it, it, like like you oh you were saying this morning about having a hundred dollars here means a lot more than three hundred dollars remember that you said right. this morning what right. was that tell that story right um it just uh you appreciate things more uh you know i, I would make uh, on average gross about three hundred dollars a day working in corporate sales you know tech sales whereas now if i make a you know i, I pretty consistently make a hundred dollars a day but then that hundred dollars means so much more to me because i made that on my own i put everything in place to be able to have that income coming in so that hundred dollars means more to me than a three hundred dollar a day would mean to me because it's mine i owned it i built it and then how i spend it is even more important i would have gone and, and bought a three hundred dollar pair of jordans you know working this corporate sales job just just because just to waste money whereas now because i'm engineered and, and I've, I've, uh, i have a mindset of, of I guess being an entrepreneur, being digital nomad, whatever you want to call it, and that I appreciate that hundred dollars more where it came from versus working in a corporate matrix job, making way much more money, but it's just being unhappy and just being like not fulfilled with how did I get that money? Because I sat in an office and I didn't talk back and I, I played the game like that. Right. That's what I got three hundred dollars from that day versus. 
being out here, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I had to hustle, scrape, you know, use all my skills, get no, get new skills to bring in that hundred dollars a day. But but it, it means so much more to me because I actually earned it. Plus, it goes a lot farther, right? A hundred dollars yeah. a day is way more money than three hundred dollars in the U.S. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. you can save like you can easily save two thirds of that, right? You know, yeah. just in the fucking bank, yeah. and then spend a third of it. Spend a thousand bucks a month, save two thousand. Easily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thousand bucks a month you can have a good life in Thailand. Oh yeah. No problem. And then you save enough the money, then you save up too, you got fifty thousand bucks in a couple of years. Right. Right? right. Plus if you put it into obviously if you put any kind of cryptocurrency or any kind of investment, it right. could be worth like shit ton of money, right? Right. So that extra money can be worth a lot, you know. I just checked one of my wallets and I had I put twenty dollars in this one crypto wallet. Three what was it, three hundred and forty one dollars or <laughs> yes. something? Yes. Three hundred and twenty one or forty one dollars now. It was twenty bucks. Yeah, that's what that's what was all it 10X, was. Over ten x, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's nuts. More more than ten x. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. So, yeah, when you're when you're free, you also have more time to think about good ideas too. You know? Yeah. So like, I, I wouldn't have gotten into crypto if I would have been worried oh, exactly. or working. You know, exactly. I would have never gotten into it. But I just got into it because I had these computer geek friends, and right. they were like, "Hey, you know, we're having a meetup." I'm like, "Cool, let's go." You know. Yeah. And I had time. You yeah. Know? You know? If you didn't have time, if you were struggling, you know, you're nine to five, you got pay bills, you, yeah. you know, would you have been open to that? Oh Actually, no, 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 right? no! I would have. I tell you exactly what I would have done. I would have thought that crypto was a scam, and I would have just said, "Well, I don't have time to study the exactly, scam. Exactly. Like, right. I don't want to know how. Like, I don't like to watch a movie about like a mass murder. How he thinks. I don't care how he thinks. I don't want to know how he thinks. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in how mass murder thinks. You know." I would rather learn how somebody who's doing something I want to do things, right? And like, so like with the same thing with crypto, I'd say, oh, it's a scam, I don't care. You know, I put it in the don't care you know, oh, box, yeah. right? It's like always like, you always say like, okay, I will look at that next weekend or tomorrow or whatever, right? Because you're always like, you have so many things on your mind, so many things to do, and you're always like thinking, okay, I'll check it out or whatever. But you, you never really have time to really look into it or even like, just really just do it. Because there's like so many other things on your mind. So you need that space in order to set up your own business, in order to like look into like new uh, new topics like uh, Bitcoin or, or crypto, or even like health, for example. Like recently, I've, I've been very much into like uh, health and nutrition and everything. All of us, man. And that, yeah, yeah. it's also like really just uh, just giving me so much more energy that I kind of changed my diet and everything. So kind of really researching that as well. So you just have so much more time to research different topics that are important. And, and what you find that is so cool is like other kind of digital nomads or, or, or entrepreneurs or fellow kind of travelers like us or, or MGTOWs, we tend to be like on the same page about so many topics, right? Yeah, Crypto, yeah, you're like sharing health, ideas. Entrepreneur, like, videos, yeah. everything. Yeah, 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 yeah and yeah, like yeah, sharing yeah. ideas like really openly. Exactly. Like you were saying this morning, we were changing money and then you were talking about, you know, I won't say what it is, but you know, Chris was sharing a really valuable idea to make money and it's like, fuck, you know, you know, that, that was something that like, a lot of like I call them three inches, but basically insecure guys would never share something like right. that because they're like, I got mine. Now right. I'm not gonna tell anybody. Right. Fuck all you guys, you know. Right. Whereas like you know, digital nomads, everybody's like, oh, I'm doing this, to make money. What are you doing? I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Oh, I made money on this for a while, but it stopped working. Yeah. Now I'm doing this. It's an abundance mindset. Right. Like, oh, right. Yeah, like, this guy is gonna take my commission. Oh no. Right. I'm like no, I need to give out more. Like right. What, what, how much more value can I put out there with no expectation? of return and just being that type of person. But but also knowing that the other guys are gonna probably give you something as much or more valuable right. over time. Cause you're like, oh, yeah. everybody's got these running into cool people, like ideas, there's a there's an affiliate conference coming up this, this weekend. Right. It's gonna totally kick ass. I went last year, right. really good guys, making serious money. A lot of them from India. Mm -hmm. A lot of like Indian, Indian digital mm -hmm. guys and they're making cash, man. Right. And they're dropping cash when they're here, you know. Yeah. You know when someone's making money, you can tell. Right. You can tell. No, these guys are balling. They have like all kinds of like uh, selling real estate online. They're like these big, big portals with massive traffic. Like right. where they're getting like millions of hits a day on these massive traffic. Other guys were selling. Uh, what were they selling last year? A lot of affiliates selling health stuff. You know, different right. like diet stuff and like, sometimes physical products like pills and things. Right. But they're making money. Like not that you want to do that, but it's always good to meet those guys and see what they're doing and learn learn about e-commerce right right you know it's a, it's not like you're gonna do everything but it's it's it I, I think i just like to fucking find out like i want to know right. what everybody's doing right everybody i meet i want to find out right. like what are you doing are you happy right like, what did you start with what did you think you were going to get into and then 
after you got in, like, what happened? Right. Like, are you happy now? Or is this what you want? And then, like, they're, they're, usually most people are like, if they tell you the truth, they'll say, well, I thought being a dentist was good because my mom wanted me to be a dentist. Oh, yeah. And then I, I studied really hard. And then I realized that it wasn't as good as I thought. And then I realized that there's certain kind of procedures that are kind of a scam that make the most money. But I don't like those procedures, so I'm not making as much as I want. And now with, with these new techniques, they're, they're kind of whittling away at my expertise. So like I have a choice of not telling people what's really good for them or doing my expertise. And they tell you these stories and you're like fucking really sad, like listening to them. Like you think, fuck, this guy's a good guy. You know, he's doing his best. He's a dentist. And then you realize, holy shit, you know, that doesn't sound that great, you know? So it's like, you know, you have to meet a lot of people to find out what is really cool, you know, for yourself. Right? That's, and that takes time, right? Yeah, it just takes a uh, headspace. You know, I've, I went through a couple like kind of temp jobs the last year and a half while I've been living this lifestyle. Uh, but I think more than anything, it gave me the headspace to figure out, to, to create my vision and create my mission in my mind. And when you're on that nine to five hamster wheel, when you're always chasing the next dopamine fix or, you know, chasing the next, uh, uh, you know, on the pussy hamster wheel, chasing the next chick you're going to you're going to fuck, um, you don't really have the time to create your vision and create your mission and to develop the skills that you need and the right mindsets that you need to 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 go accomplish it. It's one thing to want to be a digital nomad. I mean, I wanted to be, a di they call them entrepreneurs, because you just want to be a, a, a entrepreneur. You want to uh, be, you know, see these guys on the beach with their laptops, you know, making money online, quote unquote. Uh, you want that, but are you really willing to put the sacrifices and the time to, to learn and to, and to be? that and if it wasn't for other guys that, that were kind of showing me the way and if it wasn't for me taking a risk the let me live in my jeep for a year or until i can make this that happen. was ballsy man that was yeah. ballsy and you admitting it on camera was fucking ballsy too oh yeah that was seriously ballsy dude I watched it. Wow. seriously i'd give you a high five but i got two hands on the <laughs> camera yeah but, <laughs> but, but it gave me the 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 headspace to to figure it out and to, and to think it through and i think when you're on that hamster wheel you don't really get that headspace you're just uh it's weekend i need to get drunk i need to medicate and then uh sunday night uh, i gotta go to work tomorrow you know it starts again another another cycle of the hamster wheel and so uh, I think that's one big thing that I've learned in the last year is that you need time to, 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 to have the right mindset and build that right mindset. And a big part of it is being around other guys that are already oh, there. Oh, yeah. And, and oh, yeah. Help oh, you, fuck yeah. Um, you know, because that's, their mindset is abundance. Let me help, help, exactly. help. Exactly. I was right. just going to say, like, when, when you're that hamster wheel, when you're that kind of stress zone or the matrix, right? What a lot of guys uh, end up doing is like kick each other under under the bus, right? Because everybody right. just wants to get ahead. That's corporate. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking backstabbing but it's also like corporate. The whole system, right? So when, when when you're in a situation of abundance here, of freedom, right? When you have like more like surplus, then you end up like having this brotherhood where you exactly like you give to each other, you learn from each other, right? I, I you, think you help each other out and you all benefit, right? It's like the the you, like the sum is more more than its parts, right? You right. get to that kind of situation instead of like the other one where you're always like competing, you know? Right, right. And then I think that that ties back to having low cost of life because the only way you can really be like abundant is if you don't have the wolf at the door. Yeah, right. you know, exactly. you do not want the fucking wolf at the door. That's like the worst idea. I worked with this guy one time, and he always he was making like three million dollars a year, and he had a company in Japan. And I was working for him, and it was he had three million dollars in income. And the wolf was always at the door mm -hmm. because he had so many. He had a BMW M3 with an balanced engine, racing. He had a beach house that was really expensive. He had a really expensive, like, whole top of a building. Mm -hmm. He had a Brazilian stripper girlfriend. He had another, like, really gold digging girl. And, and they would make out and lick each other out and everything. But still, which sounds good, but, like, the guy was spending $5,000 a night at the clubs. Uh, he was spending five thousand dollars a night at Whoa, the clubs uh, to have the girls eat each other out and all this crazy stuff. And it was like, I don't even like the air conditioners on. It's all not private. I don't even see anything sexy myself. I, right. I don't have any interest in that really. I, he would invited me to go. I never even went with him. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, I'd rather just yeah do something else, you know. Right. So like, you know, it's like it's like. But he had the wolf at the door, and I, I worked with him for a year. I remember watching him for a long time, and I actually thought to myself. Maybe I should have the wolf of the door. Maybe that would motivate me. And I kind of thought that, and I told him, I said, I said, you know, maybe I should have the wolf of the door. And he looks at me, he goes, 
Like, because he, because he was talking about like bragging all the time, and then finally when I said that to him, because he knew I was totally sincere, he goes, he goes, dude, I, I, I'm, I, I like, don't take me seriously, like. You're doing the right thing, like, <laughs> like, he, he like do as I say. Not yeah, as yeah, I he's do. like, okay, see, he liked me. He's like, dude, no, don't do that. It's a bad idea. He goes, you'll be all stressed out and everything, you know. And he's like, you're doing the right thing. Just keep saving money, you know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, you know. Because I actually thought about it. I thought, hey, maybe the wolf at the fucking door. Wolf at the door. Wolf at the door. Yeah. Push me. That's like, that's like I want the fucking wolf at my door, making me work hard, you know, because I want to do better. But yeah. it's not. It doesn't work that way. It just makes you stressed out, you know. And then. That doesn't motivate that's you, like, right? That's like how, how the whole system is set up back home. Like, always, like, the wolf at the door, right? Like, that's the right thing. Like, you should always, like, have the wolf at the door to motivate you and everything, right? But right. actually, made, made all these studies that, that doesn't work like that at all. Like, when people do what they really want to do in their own kind of... Uh, their own kind of speed and everything at their own uh, level, I mean, then they're so, so much more productive and happy, right? Than right. having, like, the wolf at the door and being stressed all the time. So that's completely false the psychology of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, Mickey just uh, texted and he wants to meet in 15 minutes, so we're going to cut it off. I hope that was good. Any any parting uh, thoughts here? Um, just uh, we're going to be bringing you guys a lot more videos. I know for, for my experience, I really want to touch on this point and the differences, the delta between first world and, and here in Bangkok. So, um, Ronan, I just want to say thanks for having me out, man. I'm excited about the MGTOW Global Summit, the first annual uh, yeah. in about a week. So we're going to be getting things ready for that. But just be on the lookout for more videos on this channel and uh, we're going to get this message out worldwide. All right, fucking hey, dude. I, when I All saw right. you, when, Cheers, guys. when you showed up last night, man, I saw you down at the bottom of the elevator. I was like, no way, Chris can't do in person, man. I was fucking stoked, dude. I was really tired, but I was like stoked, man. Seriously, I could feel like I woke up this morning, you were still sleeping. I was thinking, fuck, it's working, man. I got a whole new group of cool <laughs> yeah. friends, you know. God awesome. damn, this is cool, you know? Yeah, you I'm also like feeling super excited to be here, super excited to be with these cool bros here. We're gonna have like a brotherhood of uh, MGTOWs and uh, did Digital Nomads out here, just having a great time and sharing ideas and everything. It's gonna be awesome. And yeah, if you want, you should uh, really sign up for this event. Yeah, if you can jump on a plane, if not, uh, enjoy the view and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next year or whatever. We're not, uh, no hard sell, but I tell you, we're having a fucking great time. And if you have something to offer, we'd love to have you here. Whether you want to come and speak or you want to come and just attend or whatever it is that you want to contribute. If you have some skill you want to, you know, you want to teach people, you know, that's fucking awesome. Like, oh, yeah, give back, man. Teach, teach the shit you learned, you know. Right. You, you, you have something to learn. Society treats you like shit, but it ain't true. Men have so much to offer, so much to give. Right. And we fucking love to give, man. Oh, yeah. You know? And that's the difference between our community, our MGTOW community and, and other communities that are out there is that our main tenant is to help each other, to uh, to not shame each other, to, to right. see eye to eye on that we have gone through mostly the same experiences, whether Denmark or you know, overseas or United States. And so, um, you know, part of this brotherhood is to help each other. And so we're going to put as much value out there for you guys out in the world. And, and you know, we want to we want to help you guys as much as possible. So um, Kick ass. just MGTOW Brotherhood, MGTOW Worldwide. All right, guys, have a good one. Signing off. See you later. Thanks for watching.